A few days ago, I fell onto this Wikipedia page by accident, and it kind of got me to thinking. See, it says there, the Eye of Providence has got its origins in Christian iconography. What in the world is that supposed to mean? The Bible says not to make images of our God or his eyeball. This Wikipedia page wants you to believe that the Eye of Providence has nothing to do with the Founding Fathers, the Freemasons having nothing to do with the Founding Fathers, and the Freemasons didn't make up that eye. It was all old Christian iconography, the all-seeing eye. No. I mean, for sure, the Freemasons didn't make it up. It goes all the way back to Egypt. Maybe further. I don't know. The Eye of Horus? Or the Eye of Ra? Our Bible talks about God's eyes a couple times. Not his eye. One eye is every single celebrity you've ever seen in a movie or on TV. All your favorite musicians, astronauts. One eye is the eye of Sauron. On top of that tower. Yeah, towers. Hmm, towers. Towers in the Bible? Yeah, there's one. <laughs> One eye is a lot of things, but it's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No. <laughs> Several times here they tell us that the Eye of Providence didn't show up until Christian this or that. But here's the most amazing blasphemy. Uh, symbolized the Trinity and God's omnipresence and divine providence. <laughs> It's not true. In fact, it's absurd on the face of it. But is that nonsense really any more ridiculous than the kinds of things we tell each other at church? You'll hear a lot of different things from a lot of different podiums, but the truth is, the symbol of our devotion to our God is our devotion to each other. That's how I read my Bible. How do you read yours? Do you read your Bible? Or do you let someone in a building somewhere read it for you and tell you what it means? That ain't right, friend. That ain't right. Remember that time they took the church building away from you? It was just a minute ago. Don't forget it. Bible Church, we'd like to invite you to find your seats in your cars. Now, <laughs> some of you never went to a drive-in theater. None of you expected to be doing it at church. But happy Mother's Day to all of you who are here. It'll be a Mother's Day you will never forget, I'm sure, having church outside in your car. Again, we restrict, uh, we request that you uh, remain in or on your vehicle as much as possible to uphold the six-foot social distancing rule. The church bathrooms are available. We ask that you go through the front door if you need to use them here. They are unlocked, even though they might be closed. And um, for those of you that would like to do your giving, this is not one of those things we're trying to push for, but by the governor's orders, there is an offering drop-in box as you drive through or drive by from your drive-in service, you can drop in your offering if you would like to do that. There's other things that we can announce. Please make sure you see the back of your uh, sermon notes. There's a special vote that we'd like to do as a church in a couple weeks in regards to adding missionaries oh, that's on there. Yeah. Don't yeah. be afraid to ask questions on that. We're here to worship God. So without any further delay, we invite you to Make yourself comfortable. You have the song sheets with you. We're just going to sing some songs and praise to God. They're all familiar. Please use your hands as much as possible. Let's sing together. He has made me glad and that this is the day to we bring the sacrifice of praise. Let's sing together and praise to God this morning. Okay. 
drums. Test. This, this, this China China test. test.